And so I, I just want to tell you today's going to be a little bit different because God has simply changed my direction this morning. And that's never happened, so I'm just going to have to, I'm just going to, have to trust him. So if you will, just, just pray with me. God, today I know is your day, God. And, and my words are useless anyway. <laughs> they're, they're not what people want to hear. They want to hear your words. They want to be encouraged today. They want to know that they're still on the path to victory. They want to know that the adversary is behind them and there's not anything that they can't do that you're already in it. You're already in their problems. You're tomorrow, the next month, next year. So God, I pray that you will do what it is that you want to do today and just, just have your way. Just have your way. Somebody say amen and at the same time say, have your way with me. Now that doesn't mean with your neighbor, that means with you. That means if something is said today that tugs your heart, please don't leave and go, oh, she was talking to you. Or how did she know that? Did you tell, no, I've not talked to anybody, I promise. Other, I know my husband's male, but nobody else's. So I'm just gonna be obedient because my, my actual Mother's Day message is about Hannah and there's nobody, I feel like, more obedient than the story of Hannah taking her son Samuel back to the priest after praying and praying and praying, God, send me a son, send me a son. How, how in the world could you have a son, but then you just give him up? Because she was obedient. She was faithful because that's what God wanted her, wanted her to see how faithful she could be. And she was, she just, she just gave, I don't know that I could do that. And so for some reason, this, this Mother's Day, I hope it's different for you. I hope that you leave today with more than flowers and a kiss on the cheek. I hope that you receive something from the power of God today. Because I believe he's got something for you moms. And men, don't, don't feel out of it. It's, it's for you too. But, but since we're on Mother's Day, that's, that's what we're going to do. So Friday night in prayer meeting... Mandy gave a word that God had given her. The tide is rising in rising fawn. And you heard Pastor Chris say that, and I believe it's just kind of the saying for right now. The tide is rising in rising fawn. But what he showed me this morning was something, something different. Now, I don't, I don't want you to go football, but I want you to say the crimson tide is rising. Now, if you know what that means, say amen. If you know I'm not talking about Nick Saban, I do love Nick Saban. Like, if you know I'm not talking about Nick Saban, but I'm talking about the blood of Jesus. I'm talking about what we just was singing about. Thank you, Jesus, for the crimson blood that I didn't deserve, but you shed it anyway. The crimson, the crimson tide is rising in rising farm. So this morning, I've got to have some help from some of my men. So when I say he changed it, he changed it completely this morning. Some ladies in the church, I want you to say three years for me. Three years. Now I want you to just think hard back for me because I don't know why three years, but God gave this to me Friday night and he said, go back three years. Three years. So moms, go back three years. What have you dealt with since 2020? 2000, is that right? 2020? I was like, what? Where are we? I'm telling y'all, he's messed it up. 2020, right? I want you to go back. I don't know what happened. I don't know who was going to be here today. I know what's happened in my life since 2020. He said, go back three years. I want you to think about long and hard. Not just what you've went through as a mother, what you've went through in life, what job changes, What's happened in your marriage? Have you lost a parent? Have you lost a kid? What has happened in your life in three years, Mom? And what I want you to do, I want you to stand up. If you know you've been through something in three years, I want you to stand up. And can you just trust me today that, like, you know you're in a Pentecostal church, but you know, like, I'm not coming to get you. Yes. Okay. All right, because... That's, that's not what God wants. Men too. I forgot. Chris is, Pastor Chris has stated, you've been through something in three years. Now, first of all, just look around. If you're sitting down, you better praise God that you, that's not you. Three years. 
That's a short period of time, isn't it? That's Jesus' ministry. Three years. And I can't imagine probably what has went on in your life. It's, I, I, that, that's unreal to me to just think about how many people are standing through something. Now, again, I, you know that we're not going to hurt you today. We're, I just want to be reverent to God. I'm, Brother Rocky, I want you to just, I need a line. Maybe uh, Brother Stanley, you go that way. Brother Stanley's going this way. What does this say? Miss Nikki, I'm going to have to take it off a minute. I'm getting a little toasty. Is that okay? <laughs> just a little bit. I'm sorry. I'm going to say it right here, though. And y'all can, if you want, yeah, just hold it for just a minute. What does this say? Caution. Caution. All right, so if it's you, and you have been through something for three, you maybe it was a long time ago, maybe it was yesterday, I want you to come stand up here. Can, can everybody that's standing, just come, come stand right in front of, right in front of the caution tape this morning, right in front. And once we get everybody up there, gentlemen, y'all can set it down. You can set it down. That's a lot. Yeah, yeah, come all the way up. They can keep going, Brother Rocky. Yeah, keep going. Keep going. There we go. There we go. All right. All right, y'all can just set it on the ground. And everybody that's in those, I just, I just want you to just, can you just press in for these people? Just, can you just be there a minute? Can you just be obedient right now yourself you're, and know that, hey, they've been through something, right? So I want you to just close your eyes. I just want you to, I'm just going to paint a picture this morning for you, okay? Three years. This is what I feel like God is saying to you. So listen, listen closely. I see you, woman of God. I see you, man of God. I see your problems, but he sees them from his perspective, not from your perspective. They're very small from his perspective. They're very much in control from his perspective. You are an overcomer. Now here's where it gets tricky. See that caution tape right there? You're pressed right up to it. That's where you think you can't go any further. That's, that's, you can call that the adversary line. Look down at that adversary line for just a second. That's where you feel like, that's it. I got to give up. This is breaking me. I can't preach anymore. I can't go to work anymore. I can't be married to this person anymore. I can't do this anymore. This is too hard. That line, you feel like, wow, I can't ever cross that line. Satan is just pushing, trying to push you back and push you back and push you back. Now, I want you to do me a favor. I want you to take like two steps back. Two steps back. Now, I don't think we have enough, but I'm just going to have Brother Rocky. We'll just do a little bit. And I want it to be in front of the yellow tape for them. Like I said, it, I don't know how far it's going to go. There we go. There we go. If you're on the ends, just pretend. Close your eyes. I just want you to be there for a minute. How many of you have been there? When you felt like you just could not pass that yellow tape. That you just kept on and on in your life and things kept getting worse. They wouldn't get better no matter what corner you turned around. That the adversary was there. He was shutting doors. He was causing people to stab you in the back and you just couldn't move on. People in your family were passing away. Kids are doing things crazy. There you are, you're just stuck behind that yellow caution. But here's what I want today, this is the word, the crimson tide is rising. What color is this tape? Red. Red. This is the blood. This is the blood, and this is the last thing I want, 
I want you to hear from the Lord. And then I'm going to pray for some of you. So I just, I know this is different today. Happy Mother's Day to you. But I want you to leave different so that next year I don't have to pre some, preach a message that goes, what have you been through the last four years? I want you to know how to handle the next three years, right? I want you to know where your help was in these three years. So look at that red tape. Pretend it's in front of you if you're on the end. Because that problem that you have, I want you to just, just think about it. Think of, You know it. You go back there pretty often anyway if we're honest. Think about what happened. Think about who hurt you. Think about who left you. Now I want you to think, there's a reason the red line is in front of the yellow. Because the blood of Jesus, nothing's going to ever, ever be greater than him. That problem that you had in your life, those three years, whatever happened, it never once crossed the bloodline. Not one time did it go across what Jesus can do. You felt like it was close, right? You felt like it was going to break you at times. But it never, not one time, came close to the bloodline. You guys can lay that down for me. Now this may be a little bit harder, but I just, I still want to show you where you are in those three years. If you can, I just want... I want you to leave room, leave room like there's someone beside you. Just a little bit of room right here. Because we can know that nothing's going to cross the bloodline. We can come to church and, and we can think everything is okay. We can, we can hear songs and, and we can praise through all of our fakeness. And it's not okay within your heart. We can show up and we put a smile on our face and we walk through and act like, I'm the happiest person today. I'm the happiest mother in the world. And you could be dreading going home today. You could be dreading having to go to work tomorrow. Heck, you could dread going to sleep tonight because you don't know what's going to attack you. But you know it's not going to cross the bloodline. But I want you to leave a space. And I just want you to begin to praise him. This may be different for some of you. And I want some prayer warriors. I want some of my men. I want, I want, uh, I know Pastor Chris, you're up here. I want... Pastor Chris and, and Rocky and Stanley, I want you guys to help me because this is what's going to happen. Pastor Chris is going to come up here. I will use him first. We're standing there, and sometimes we're just at our lowest of lowest points, and we know, wow, well, I'm doing this. I'm, I'm, I'm pastoring a church. I'm going for I'm giving it my all. I'm doing everything that God has called me to do. But Jesus, I just, I still feel bad. Jesus, I still f don't feel good. Anybody ever been there? You just don't feel good spiritually. But what you're leaving room for is Jesus. Because he, this is where he is. He's right there. He's holding your hand through all of that. Meaning he didn't leave you. He didn't forsake you during that issue. You were not by yourself. You may have felt like you were by yourself, but he's right here, and I'm squeezing his hand. It makes you feel a lot different, doesn't it, standing by yourself than standing right there with somebody just, I got you. I got you, Chris. I've got you. Maybe that's what Jesus needs to say to some of you today. I've got you. I've got you. I've got your ministry. I've got your life. I've got you. I'm ordering your steps. I've got you. And so today I'm going to ask those men, if you would, to come by. And, and just, just, I want you to just use your discernment, guys, today for our moms, for our men. And I want you to come by 
whoever you feel led to do, and just come by and squeeze their hand and begin to pray for them and say, I've got you. I have got you. It's not going to cross the bloodline that God had you the entire time. Elijah or whoever's it, Sadie, can you guys turn us on um, Reckless Love again, please? If you guys will just begin to worship, just begin to speak with your father right now. These men are going to come around. Nobody get jealous or mad that a man's holding your wife's hand because I just told them to, okay? I just want to be obedient to him in this moment. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We worship you, Jesus. 